Hey everyone, I'm Roman and this is Massive Voodoo TV. Today we will build a base for Games Workshops, Lord of the Rings, Elrond. This basing lesson is aimed at beginners and I will guide you through the full process. So far I did not paint many Lord of the Rings miniatures, especially in the last 10 years I did not paint any. I painted some Urukai, I painted Galadriel, I painted a small diorama, I painted Aragorn, Grimdalf, and now I painted Elrond. Here is a little overview to show you what's coming at you. I'm not so much into Lord of the Rings miniatures. But recently, when one of my private coaching students brought Glorfindel, Lord of the West from Forgeworld, I could not help myself. I want to paint a beautiful Lord of the Ring miniatures too. I picked Elrond and I already saw Andy Wardle from Cult of Paint painting his a Golden Demon entry. Without Andy's work in progress pictures, I would not even know the model existed. I got super inspired by Andy's work. It's such a beautiful piece. And I was a little bit intimidated because my plan was not to paint him for a game stay. I just wanted to paint him for explanation during two days of teaching and give a little insight into the basing that I've done for him. It's aimed for gaming and beginners, you can say. Enjoy. Do not forget to press a thumbs up so more people can enjoy our content. Thank you very much. When presented with a beautiful and dynamic sculpt, you have only one choice. You can only build a cool base. It does not always have to be a display base, but you can also build cool gaming bases. I will show you in a very simple way how you can achieve that the base and the miniature connects and that there is a fitting environment that makes sense and tells a story. Very important is that you are inspired and have your very own vision and inspiration in your mind. Welcome to Rivendell. In my vision, I saw autumn and fall in Rivendell. Rivendell being attacked and Elrond riding out to protect it. In my vision, I wanted to catch the warmth, the leaves, the glory of the place, even with a simple gaming base. If you got an inspiration like this, it's very important that you limit yourself. You cannot build full Rivendell on a gaming base but you can break it down into very important elements. For me, on my base, I wanted to catch the downhill dynamics of the horse a little bit. I wanted to grab the river aspects and work with riverbed stones there. And I wanted to grab the autumn with the leaves and um, a root and a piece of wood there, but rather simple. It was very interesting as my private coaching student also had a wish to build a base during his private coaching instead of only painting and we went exactly for kind of the same inspiration but on a display base. So we built a little bridge on top there and we had a little bit more space to work on. So here's the quick inspiration that you can also transport this to a display base. But now back to simple and our gaming base. Let's check back with the material you need for the space. Of course you need your miniature. Clean it, prepare it, glue it together. You need your base and some tools I used to clipper, a hobby blade, some super glue, a toothpick. Then for the material I used some dried soil, just regular soil out of the garden, but dry. I used some cork pieces, different sizes. You can get them at IKEA, hobby stores, tool markets, wherever you find them. I used some dry wood pieces, very tiny ones, to use them as roots. And if you want, I did not use it, but if you want for a cheap material, you can also go into the forest and collect bark from dead trees. Dead trees means they are lying on the ground and are not living trees anymore. It makes up for great rocks. You need some putty. I personally recommend milliput, but you can also use any other putty that you prefer. For the final touches on the base, you need some birch leaves. They come from the tree that is called birch and they look like this. 
around June, at least here in Germany, they start falling off from the trees and they look more, to look more brownish. And you can collect them actually to use them as leaves on your bases. Or you can buy them from someone who collected them. Find the links below. If you don't want to use this material for your leaves, you can also check back with natural leaves. You can just collect leaves in autumn and fall and grind them to leaf parts that you can glue. Or you can even use tea leaves. For placing them we will use matte varnish. Optional are some grass tufts that you can find from me, Nature or other companies. The more bases you build, the more you will know about base building. As long as this is not natural for you, I always recommend making a small sketch. It becomes natural the more bases you build, the more material you know for basing. While doing the sketch, you don't have to think, oh, I cannot draw or something, just do it. I personally always recommend making a top view, a bird's view on the base and a side view to understand how tall you want to build it and also to understand the structure of the base and where you want to place the miniature. I do start with using super glue on the base and then rip off tiny parts of thin cork and place them carefully. You can start with bigger parts, do as you like and you can also use less super glue than I do. Here comes the toothpick, I need it sometimes as an additional tool to keep things in place. To make it readable in this small scale I use very tiny pieces. To build up the height I use thicker cork. And I often use my clipper to destroy the edges of the cork. I personally never like bases where you can see the material that is used for basing. If it's just like plain cork ripped off and glued there it doesn't look very good. I glued the model to the base. Even for simple gaming bases I enjoy the moment when my build up fits to the sketch. Now I connect the cork and the figure and a lot of elements on the base, the groundwork with some soil. Just put super glue where you want it and add soil there and then let it all dry. After mixing the milliput 50-50 I rolled some tiny balls of milliput. I can guarantee you these tiny balls will always be too big, so cut them in half. You will know what I mean when you do it. And then press them to the base with the use of the side of my hobby blade. If you use your fingers, you will have your fingerprints in. Usually pressing them to the base is enough. You don't need glue. Sometimes when they dry, some of these stones will fall off and you can glue that one back. Milliput takes around 12 hours of drying completely to make the milliput dry faster. I'm using a yellow light lamp that creates a lot of heat. It's a basic simple lamp that I got from IKEA I think and I use it just for this in my studio. It kind of bakes the milliput. Take care to not melt your plastic figure. Check back with it once in a while. After priming the miniature I started my paint job and I used very warm colors everywhere from the beginning on to grab that Rivendell atmosphere, ambience. When the paint job was done, I added some flower turfs to the base. I personally like to glue them with a tiny drop of super glue because if I will do anything else to the base with water or something, they will still connect to the base. Then I added the leaves. For a large amount of leaves, I'm using matte varnish to bring them in place and to hold them in place. For the smaller single pieces I glued to the miniature to create the effect of wind, I used super glue and a toothpick again as a tool. I hope you enjoyed this basing lesson for beginners. Thank you very much for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press a thumbs up so more people get our videos suggested in their feed. Thank you very much.
Roman out. Keep on happy painting. Bye bye. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up